Hi, this is Wiley Sharp with Catamaran Central, and today I want to take you for a quick video walkthrough on board a 2017 Fountain Peugeot Maestro. I actually was just down in Barbados last weekend checking her out, took her out sailing with the owner, spent some time on board the boat, and uh, all in all, it's a really nice boat. It's a Maestro lay layout, it's got a square top main, it's got upgraded generator, upgraded engines, solar, foam cell batteries, Garmin electronics package, cockpit fridge, ice maker, big anchor, new anchor chain, uh, synthetic teak in the cockpit. I mean, the list goes on and on. I'm gonna have the pricing and full spec sheet in the description down below. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below, shoot me an email, let's go ahead and jump aboard. We're gonna begin today's tour here on the Port Sugar Scoop. Before we get too far though, I wanna point out these dinghy davits that the seller had built for the boat. Uh, they're way over spec. Um, I mean, you can see they're gusseted. They're at the joint or at the bend. I mean, those are something I would expect to see on like a 70 foot monohull or something. Uh, definitely could accommodate a much larger tender than the aluminum AB with 20 horsepower Yamaha. Uh, but anyways, wanted to point that out before we got too far. So through here on the port side, we've got the first of two mechanical spaces. This size houses the um, one of the two Volvo motors. They're the upgraded 75 horsepower motors. Before we make our way to the cockpit here, we're gonna make our way around the weather deck, the fly bridge, the helm, and then the cockpit. So as we make our way up, you'll see there's ample stored uh, solar all along here on the port side, as well as I'll point it out on the stern too. Nice wide weather decks with integrated grab rails throughout. Quite windy here today. So you can see it's a large single piece trampoline. The seller has a brand new trampoline, which has uh, not been installed yet, but, but available for the new owner. But it's also equipped with a factory bowsprit, jib on a roller furler too. It's got the factory cushion set, anchor locker with anchor chain that was replaced in 2020 and an oversized Mantis anchor. And then through here, we've got the four deck hatch. And in that four deck hatch, not only do we have the new 200 feet of anchor chain, uh, which is up spec than the factory chain. Uh, we also have the Cruise RO water maker, which makes somewhere between 40, 50 gallons per hour. Making our way around the starboard weather deck, you'll see it's a nice wide weather deck and we make our way here to the helm. So this boat's equipped with two electric winches, so the outboard halyard winch, the main primary winch, and then the secondary winch is a manual winch. This boat was really well specced from the factory. So here at the helm, we have the Garmin touchscreen GPS. Below that, we've got the Volvo engine tachometers, engine on and offs, as well as a number of Garmin multifunction displays, including the GPSs, a quick anchor windlass remote, your two throttles, really good line of sight from the helm, both fore and aft. Um, this is why you don't get lazy and you fasten the cushion. So I didn't fasten that one when I went up there. But you'll see she's got the sun beds up forward. Nice U-shaped settee aft. It's also a square top main sail. We had her out sailing at about 18 knots of breeze and we were absolutely cooking through the water here. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I haven't had that much fun sailing in a while. Uh, we were definitely, uh, definitely moving. We were seeing 10, 11 knots consistently. Through here, we've got the second mechanical space, which houses the other Volvo engine, as well as the Onan generator. So I'll give you guys a quick pan of through here of Carlisle Bay. And of the cockpit, obviously. So here we've got a nice large stern bench. You can see this boat's got an aftermarket uh, stereo, which was installed. So we've got a speaker there, as well as a speaker over there. Uh, but a nice, well-varnished, beautiful L-shaped settee with a bench. Plenty of room for eight people dining at that table. I've had more than that on a Saba 50 at the dining table. And then over here on the starboard side, we have a nice day bed with plenty of storage beneath there, as well as beneath there. And you can see it's a thin synthetic teak cockpit, cabin, uh, cockpit sole. We've got the Vitra Frigo cockpit refrigerator, as well as an isotherm ice maker, which was replaced in the last two years. Let's go ahead and make our way inside the boat. 
Okay, we're going to make our way into the salon on Winter's Coming, the 2017 Maestro Fontaine Peugeot Saba 50. Over here on the left-hand side, we've got the U-shaped galley with the kitchen island like you find in all the Saba 50s. Um, in general, with this galley, and I've chartered a lot of boats, sailed a lot of boats, I still think to this day, the Saba 50, video, uh, Saba 50 galley is one of the best galleys of any catamaran ever built. Um, I mean, you could go watch old videos of me on Sabas and you'll hear me say the same thing. So I've got a dual basin sink over here aft facing with a large opening, giving you really good access to the cockpit, creating a real continuous flow between the cockpit and the galley and salon. Ample storage down below, not just in the cupboards, but also drawers. Got a built-in oven. They removed the factory microwave to, um, to have more storage in that space, which is fairly common. Um, we've got a four burner cooktop, which is like an oversized cooktop. And then on the island, we've got the isotherm dual drawer refrigerator. And then over four to that, we have the uh, deep freezer. Um, making our way to the nav station. <coughs> Sorry, that was not a COVID cough. Um, four PCR tests this week. Um, down below the nav station, we've got all the 12 volt switches, as well as the control for the oversized, or I'm sorry, the upgraded Onan generator, as well as the Victron battery charger inverter. Here at the forward fa facing nav station, we've got a Garmin touchscreen chart plotter, a tank monitor, battery monitor, fusion stereo control, as well as a handheld for the VHF. And it's a really nice forward facing nav station. We've got the shades up just because it keeps it a little bit private, a little bit nicer in here. You can still see through them because they're Texeline. Uh, creates a nice feel in here, but if you did want to take them down to have a better outside view of the boat, really, really easy to do. Start with four, we've got a nice L-shaped settee with the upgraded factory um, like leather material. It's not actually leather. Um, it's more water resistant. I can't remember the product offhand uh, with storage underneath the settee. It's also got the coffee table with storage beneath there as well, too. Starboard aft, we've got the um, we've got a little more storage over here as well as down below. Let's go ahead and make our way down to the cabins. Start checking those out. So we're going to make our way port forward first down this companion way. We've got the first of four guest cabins. Now, Fountain Peugeot was one of the first builders in this size range to build a four cabin um, owner's version catamaran. You know, Leopard does that now. Lagoon does it now. This was really one of the first boats in the 50 foot range to do that. A lot of natural light coming in from this um, outward facing window and then a head all the way forward with a separate shower stall forward of that, as well as access to the four peak through that door there. Uh, we've got a hanging locker just inside the door, as well as storage underneath here too. This boat's equipped with a crew cabin, which in most cases it's used as storage, but we might as well take a quick look at that. They've got it nicely made up. Um, you know, if I owned a boat like this to go cruising, this would completely become like a workshop storage area. I mean, to me, that's what the space was really designed for. Uh, but hey, what do I know? Across from that, we've got a really nice large hanging locker as well, too. And then we have the crew head, which, you know, if you're not using the crew cabin, you probably don't need the crew head. Although it is nice to have a day head for if you have guests on board for happy hour or dinner and they don't have to go through a cabin to use a head. Um, if you didn't want to use it as a day head, you could also very nicely turn it into a laundry room. Starboard aft, we have the first uh, VIP cabin on the boat. Um, the, the Maestro cabin would be the primary cabin. This is probably the second nicest cabin. Semi walk around queen size berth, lots of natural light coming from the window there, as well as window uh, light coming from the window aft facing with plenty of ventilation overhead coming in from overhead. On the outboard side, we've got a uh, head, sink, vanity, storage, and then forward to that a separate shower stall as well too. So we're going to make our way across the salon. I'll give you guys just a quick pano through the salon here. I just love these Sabas. I mean, I've sailed them quite a bit, put a few thousand miles under the keel on, on board a Saba 50. It's just a comfortable boat. But um, anywho, okay, making our way down the starboard companionway. 
I'll show you the third guest stateroom, which is an athwart ship queen. A lot of natural light coming in from the window on the outboard side. Look how nice that water looks out there, by the way. And then port forward. We've got similar head to what we saw starboard forward with a separate shower stall forward. Now we're going to check out what makes this boat and this layout one of the primo boats in the class, and it's this Maestro stateroom here. So all the way up forward, we've got a split head, um, you know, with the shower stall over there, galley, uh, vanity mirror sink in the middle, and then the actual wash closet, as they call it in Europe, forward from there. I like the way that they did the, the split head on the Saba 50. I mean, other boats have had it, but I think it's just a nice layout. Makes it a really usable space. A lot of storage and hanging lockers here on the inboard side. Got a nice little workstation over here on the outboard side. And, uh, and then a semi walk around uh, berth here aft with tons of natural light coming in. Um, you know, one thing people always say about owner's versions is, you know, these little desks, oh, I wish there was more storage, I wish there was more storage. Why do they have the seating area down there? Well, you may never use the space. This particular owner used the space as a workstation, so um, they got a lot of value out of it. And the reality of it is on this outboard wall, you have so much storage um, just in this cabin alone that I think you'd be hard pressed to need more storage in your master stateroom. Uh, there's also storage, storage here alongside the beds too. All in all, one of the better layouts in my opinion. So that is the 2017 Fontaine Peugeot Saba Maestro version, Winter's Coming. She's currently in Barbados, but she's gonna be moving here shortly. So definitely contact us to get an idea on where she's currently located and available for showings. If you have any questions on the boat, please leave a comment down below, shoot me an email. And as always, if you like what I have to say, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks and have a good day.